Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas. Today I'm gonna to do a little surfboard comparison between the Seaside, the Mashup, and the Dominator 2. Now, each of these three boards are unique by design, and if you're trying to build a quiver between these three boards, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of each, how they complement each other, even though there's some overlap in wave size. And I spoke to the guys here at the Rip Curl Surf Center in San Clemente, told them I wanna do the review inside the shop, they have all three models in stock. We're gonna head inside, sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now I think one of the best places to start is just to look at the overall outline of the three boards. So this is the Dominator 2, we've got the mashup in the middle, and then we've got the Seaside here on the right. And one of the things that I personally look for performance-wise, I'm the guy that wants to sit in the pocket and go top to bottom. And what's gonna enhance that out of the board features is if we look at the Dominator 2 and we say the wide point is about right here, it's wide point's actually a little behind center, which is gonna promote pivot. And we've gotta remember that the Dominator 2 is gonna be more of that performance board out of this three board quiver here. Now, they're saying that the Dominator 2 is best in two to six foot surf. And I would agree. I feel like it's got um, good speed. The board pivots quick. It'll do pretty much anything I would expect a high performance shortboard to do. And it's one of my favorites. Now I've ridden it in really good waves, well overhead at some of the point breaks. And then I took it to Kelly's pool and it had excellent flow. It had the pivot I was looking for. And actually as a quad at Kelly's pool, it was really hard for me to slow it down because it was carrying so much speed there. So the Dominator 2 for me actually is that high performance shortboard slash daily driver. And I remember in the review, I put a twin plus trailer setup in the Dominator 2. And I felt like I could even ride it as a small weight performance board and it still had that speed. Remember, it has good width and surface area in the middle of the board and it's also got a relatively or somewhat wider tail block. So I really feel like the Dominator 2 for a lot of people in our community, including myself, is that small wave performance board and it could even be that daily driver high performance short board for a lot of us. For me, it's one of my favorite and fills that spot in my quiver. Now the mashup, let's skip the mashup for a second and go straight to the seaside and you can see it's got quite a bit wider nose here and it's wide point just like the mashup is a little forward from center however this one seems to be more forward than center because there's more foam and more width in the seaside one of the things i remember about the seaside that i really liked a lot is it has incredible down the line speed it has a low exit rocker uh, and a low entry rocker and so having that width and the lower rocker really carries that speed I'm looking for. Now, we gotta remember, we're comparing the seaside is pretty much a high performance fish. So with that being in mind, for me, the wide point front from center is gonna promote carving. It's got all that surface area up here, so it's gonna paddle probably better than the other two. And I found that Maybe like head high and below is kind of the sweet spot for the seaside, but I rode it in bigger waves too. And I felt like the more I rode it and got used to it and stayed on one board, I felt like I even had fun in overhead surf. So talking about the difference between the seaside and let's say the Dominator 2, which would be the two farthest extremes of both boards. There's my high performance short board over there or my daily driver. And this would be more or less my groveler to like, a good, fun, small wave performance fish. Hence, they come out with the mashup. And if you look at the mashup, it has some similarities in the two Dominator 2 and Seaside board. It has its wide point a little forward from center, pulled in the nose quite a bit more. You've got a five fin option, and it has the tail similar to your Seaside here. So it's almost like they took um, a a small wave performance board or a high performance short board and, the, and a performance fish and they said let's make the mashup 
And I'll say this, if I want to have a lot of down the line speed, do a lot of carves and surf more down the line and project, I feel like the Seaside does that a lot better than the mashup. This will even carve better from my perspective. Now the mashup is going to go top to bottom faster. So it's going to be more like drawing a high performance shortboard line, but still carrying a little bit extra width. It's got more speed than the Dominator 2. Now there is that wider nose. So there are some liabilities with the wider nose boards being a little bit more temperamental to catching up in the nose area here. So Seaside's going to catch a little bit more compared to the mashup because the mashups pulled in a bit more. So I hope you get the gist of what I'm saying. The Seaside Performance Fish think fast down the line, better groveler, and everything about it wants to project and get you down the line with a lot of speed compared to the mashup. Now the mashup is fast and loose if you watch the review. Remember this about the mashup. It's gonna to go top to bottom a lot faster than the Seaside. I really feel like the mashup's doing turns that the Seaside can't really do. Like I said, it wants to project and get down the line. Now, if we're gonna compare the mashup and the Dominator 2, I'll say this, it, the Dominator 2 having a more pulled in nose and the wide point back from center, it's promoting pivot. There is no catching or liability on the nose here on the Dominator 2 compared to the mashup. And I really feel like these two boards will do similar, draw similar lines top to bottom. I feel like the mashup's carrying a little bit more speed. And right when I first popped to my feet, this is feeling looser compared to the Dominator 2. However, I pushed the Dominator 2 in bigger waves and I feel like the mashup tops out at about head high. So that's when I would then step onto the Dominator 2 and feel like this is giving me what I want out of a high performance shortboard. Now I've been talking about the three different models, the lines they draw and where they'd fit in a quiver. I wanna talk a little bit about fins because it's super important. I talk about the Seaside projecting, having that drive and surfing more down the line and, and working excellent as a groveler and that performance fish. And I rode the bulk of the review with the Machado quads. And these have a more of a keel shape to them. And I found them to be fast with that drive, but it really hinders the board from going top to bottom. I really feel like the Seaside already is more designed to get down the line and be fast. It has no uh, center box for you to have something to pivot off of and push, but just switching from the Machado quad to something that has more of a high performance outline like my quad set, this is gonna give you more pivot. This is still gonna have excellent drive and you're gonna be able to surf your seaside more top to bottom. So I, now I'm changing um, the way the board performs by changing the fin template and design. Same thing with the mashup and the Dominator 2. When I talk about what the boards are best in, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and why you would want to have maybe a two board quiver or a three board quiver, you can mess around a lot with the fins and really change the, the options and give yourself more performance just by the fin templates and the setups that you choose. Now, if I were to have um, a quiver out of these two, I feel like I can do it just with the Dominator 2 and the Seaside. This will cover me from one to three foot groveling and this will take me up to six foot and give me all the performance that i need and i really feel like these two boards suit my surfing now i do a lot of surfboard consulting really helping our community dial in your quiver so we spend about a half an hour talking about boards volume skill level would this be a good three board quiver for the people in our community i say absolutely yes and i'll tell you why this is your groveler it's carrying that speed, catching more waves. It's up on top of the water and it's projecting down the line faster. Then you guys in our community are saying, hey, I wanna surf a little more top to bottom and work on progressing my surfing and have more of a high performance feel compared to my typical fish or small wave groveler, seaside. Would the mashup be good? Absolutely, and I'll tell you why. It's in a shorter, wider package. It's carrying a lot more speed than a typical daily driver or even small wave performance board. And the mashup's gonna go 
top to bottom faster compared to the C side because of all the fin options you have and because of the curvy outline and the way the nose is pulled in and it's still in that shorter package. So I feel like if you're struggling to come off the bottom and surf vertical in smaller waves and you're riding a lot of boards like the Seaside to have a similar outline, one of the hindrances could be that it has the fishy outline, it's only a quad or a twin fin, and there's not some center fin for you to pivot off of. The mashups are great um, middle ground between your groveler and your small weight performance board or high performance short board. Now for me, on the Dominator 2, a lot of people in our community are weekend warriors. They surf a couple times a month. And I tell them this in my surfboard consulting, if I were to pick a high performance shortboard for most of the people in our community, I gravitate towards the Dominator 2. Why? It's in a shorter package. So it's gonna be more responsive. It's gonna be easier to put where I want quicker. So the Dominator 2 would be something that I would compare to like the Rocket Wide Squash Tail, the Mini Go Squash Tail. Any boards that fit that small wave performance board description, I would put the Dominator 2 toe to toe with any of those boards. So in the end, I feel like this is a great three board quiver. You've got your Groveler performance fish that's fast in small waves, and you've got a Dominator 2 that'll take you up to six foot surf, giving you the agility and performance of a high performance shortboard in your mashup somewhere in the middle of the two and you want to surf small mushy waves more top to bottom and get really good and dial in your performance surfing well guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode comparing the seaside the dominator 2 and the mashup and the special shout out thanks to the folks here at rip curl surf shop in san clemente as you can see they have the inventory you guys will be stoked come in grab a sled until next time we'll see you in the water bye bye